When we think of meadows, it's usually something like this, an area filled with wildflowers, grasses, and pollinators all doing their thing. But there are other types of meadows and some aren't even on land. Let's explore a hidden meadow under the surface. To find it, we need to head to the beach. Hi, Rachel, and this is Planting Curiosity. This is eelgrass. They grow along coastlines around the world, including in British Columbia in shallow and calm bays, estuaries, and inlets where the substrate is sandy or muddy. Eelgrass meadows protect coastlines as their long ribbon-like blades slow down wave energy and stabilize sediments, protecting shorelines from erosion. They get the name eelgrass because, well, look at it. They kind of have an eely like shape, and when they're in the water, they kind of dance and move, kind of like how an eel would. Eelgrass is more closely related to the grass in your lawn compared to seaweed. That's because eelgrass moved from the ocean to the land and then back to the ocean, while seaweed just stayed in the ocean. <laughs> eelgrass is a marine flowering plant and it has flowers certain times of the year that produce pollen and it spreads on the surface of the water to spread eelgrass to other places. They are biodiversity hotspots, as they provide important habitat for juvenile salmon, herring, pipefish, sea slugs, crabs, and so much more. This is a tiny Dungeness crab that will get much larger. Right now, it's hanging out in the shallows near the eelgrass bed. Look how cute it is. Okay, bye. <laughs> Eelgrass faces a lot of different threats and challenges. When boats go through shallow areas, such as kayaks with their paddles, or boats with propellers, or when they drop anchors, they can cut up and disrupt the eelgrass meadows. Even though there's a lot of threats that eelgrass faces, there's amazing organizations such as Sea Change that are making a huge difference through their research and restoration work Sea Change is an environmental nonprofit organization, and we're focused on understanding, protecting, and restoring marine environments. So I'm the executive director of Sea Change, which means I am basically making sure everything is running smoothly and everyone has what they need to get their jobs done. When we find a place where eelgrass is either in danger, it's starting to shrink, or perhaps there's an area where there used to be eelgrass, but there isn't now, we'll start looking at it and assessing it for a restoration potential. Why is it so important to protect and restore eelgrass? Even though a lot of people don't realize that there are eelgrass meadows right under the surface of the water, all of the creatures in the ocean sure know that they're there because most of them live some part of their life in an eelgrass bed or in other nursery habitat. So eelgrass is a really important uh, ecosystem for all of those creatures. One other function of an eelgrass bed that's important for humans particularly is that they sequester and store carbon. Because they're a flowering plant and they're photosynthesizing, they're actually removing that carbon dioxide from the water and it's storing it in the sediments. And uh, these beds are there for you know hundreds if not thousands of years. Seagrasses are a very important blue carbon ecosystem, which is an ecosystem that sequesters carbon much higher rates than terrestrial systems do. Eelgrass sort of has these three parts to it. It's got these blades, which are the leaves, and this is the part that photosynthesizes, and it's got this uh, rhizome, which goes along underground, and then at each of those points, there's these little roots, and this is how it stays in the sediment. So when you see eelgrass underwater, it's actually all buried, so the rhizome and the roots are all under, and all you see are these lovely blades and leaves sticking up, waving in the seawater. I've done restoration on land, but never underwater. So can you tell me what is it like? Well, it certainly adds an extra layer of difficulty onto it because just getting to the area is, is a challenge. So we have a dive team and there's basically three steps that we go through. So the first step is we find a nice, healthy eelgrass bed and we harvest the eelgrass from that area. We'll come along with the trowel and we just gently pull the whole plant out 
and then we bring that up to the surface and we actually have to tie those shoots onto little metal washers because they need a little bit of weight. Otherwise, when they get planted, they're just gonna float away. We give them back to the divers and the divers take them to the new area. And again, using a trowel, dig a little hole, put their little clump of eelgrass in. And that's uh, basically the steps of an eelgrass transplant. It's incredible. You did a lot of good work. What kind of region does Sea Change restore? Sea Change has actually been doing this work for about 20 years now. And we've done transplants and worked with groups up and down the coast of the Salish Sea. We've probably transplanted in over 35 sites and we go back to monitor them regularly still. After all these years, we still monitor our very first one, which was in Todd Inlet. So you're busy. <laughs> very busy. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of pressure on eelgrass beds with climate change, with increased, you know, anthropogenic uh, development along our coastline. There's definitely a lot of pressure, but there's a lot that we can do as well. And I think, you know, the work that we're doing that a lot of other groups are doing, all the education and outreach is helping people to understand the impact they can have. There's a lot of reason for us to hope that our eelgrass beds will be healthy for a very long time to come. What are things that we can all do to help protect eelgrass? There's a lot of things that people who live along the coast can do. For example, if you're out on the water a lot, just try and be aware of what's right under the surface. An individual can have a huge impact. For everyone who's living close to the coast, even if you're not right on that beach, you're living in a watershed that's all going to drain down to that ocean. So just be careful what you're putting down your drain, and that's going to be a huge help. The work being done is a perfect example of how even small, consistent efforts can have a big impact. Eelgrass does so much for our coast. It provides habitat, stabilizes shorelines, and helps store carbon. And when we protect it, we're not just saving a plant, we're preserving the whole coastal ecosystem that depends on it.